Private notice question on the conflict in Tigray. Lord Alton of Liverpool. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the private notice question standing in my name on the order paper, and in so doing I declare my interest as the Vice Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Eritrea and as a patron of the Coalition for Genocide Response. Call the Minister, Baroness Sir. My Lords, the UK is deeply concerned by ongoing violence between federal and regional forces in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The Foreign Secretary spoke to Prime Minister Abiy on the 10th of November to emphasise the need to protect civilians and allow humanitarian access. He also urged de-escalation of the violence and for swift moves to political dialogue. We remain in contact with the Ethiopians, the region and our partners in the international community to achieve these goals. I call Lord Alton of Liverpool. My Lords, in thanking the Noble Baroness, the Minister Lady Sugg, for that reply, I know that she will have seen the reports that I sent her about the threatened impending assault on the Tigrayan capital of Mekele and attacks on refugee camps, both war crimes, and the horrific violence against women and children, which one report suggests may be on the edge of genocide. Given that the Ethiopians say that they will, quote, show no mercy to Mekele with 500,000 in imminent danger, what will we do to fulfil our duties under the Genocide Convention to prevent, to protect and to punish? And what urgent steps are we taking through the United Kingdom envoy for the Horn and Red Sea with our allies in the Gulf, through the African Union and the United Nations to avert yet more deaths, more carnage, more instability and more refugees? I'm grateful to the Noble Lord for sharing the information he has received and, you know, it's some of many concerning reports that we've seen. Um, reports of the imminent push uh, onto the city of Macale with time-limited threats are a very serious concern. We've been consistent in our messaging that civilians must be protected, that humanitarian access must be granted. Given the continued conflict and as a complement to the efforts uh, of the region to press for mediation, we'll continue to, to press these messages with all relevant international partners, including at the UN Security Council, where the issue is due to be discussed imminently. Lord McConnell of Glenscorridale. My Lords, this situation uh, reinforces the critical importance of having an atrocity prevention strategy at the heart of the new Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Can the Noble Lady, uh, the Minister, outline for us any commitments that the UK has through the Conflict Security and Stabilisation Fund to conflict prevention in Ethiopia and the region? And, and in doing so, uh, can she affirm the critical importance of United Kingdom overseas development assistance in conflict prevention and development, which we know is an absolute prerequisite for peace. And in doing that, will she perhaps indicate to the Chancellor that he should not be breaking manifesto promises tomorrow? Uh, my Lords, the Noble Lord is absolutely right that conflict is a key part of our overseas development assistance. Uh, we have a conflict security and stabilisation force programme in Ethiopia which works to support a peaceful and inclusive political uh, transition. Uh, we also have wider uh, programmes in the region which support the peace process uh, and works to stop conflict and promote human rights and deliver women peace and security objectives. I hope Noble Lords will forgive me if I don't speculate ahead of a fiscal event. I call Lord Chiji. My, my lords, as it is, it is reported that as many as 200,000 refugees are anticipated to cross into Sudan in the coming months through the Hamdayad border in Kasala state, the Lugdi in, in Gadaraf state, and the Adarafi uh, border. With close to 2 million IDPs already in the region, uh, will the minister confirm that we are asking our UK representatives, representative in the UN to raise this conflict as a matter of urgency with the Security Council and also support the Africa Union efforts uh, to bring a halt to the fighting through the good offices of the senior African statesmen who have been uh, allocated to them. And without delay, will the government assist the UNHCR and the WFP and other agencies with the support they need to cope with this immediate crisis. Uh, my Lords, we are working very closely with the African Union uh, to ensure that they are doing all they can to, uh, to stop this conflict. Uh, I can say that we have actively supported the A3 plus one to bring this onto the agenda at the UN Security Council. Um, and we are, uh, of course, working with UN agencies, UNHCR, WFP, UN OCHA, uh, to provide support for the many uh, thousands of refugees who do so desperately need it. Called Baroness Ainley of St John's. 
my lords, I welcome what the, my noble friend has just said about working closely with the African Union. Uh, so what uh, discussion has our ambassador, Dr. McPhail, had with them with regard to the work of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development? Because uh, they could play a key role in conflict resolution, as indeed they have in South Sudan. Um, I agree with my noble friend. Uh, we've been engaging with both the AU and IGAD, uh, including the Foreign Secretary, speaking to the Prime Minister of Sudan, who's chair of IGAD, and uh, also speaking to the South African Minister for International Relations, who, of course, are the current AU chair, and we share their view that de-escalation and political dialogue is needed. Uh, our ambassador, um, uh, Dr. McPhail, will continue to coordinate with both the AU and IGAD on finding a political solution to the conflict. I call Viscount Waverley. Does the minister agree that indiscriminate shelling of Michele would be a war crime and that we must galvanise international action to bring any perpetrators to justice? And my lords, is the world going to stand by yet again, knowing that mayhem is seemingly set to unfold, do nothing, and having to then deal with the added consequences of regional instability with the combination of Somalia, Sudan and Yemen across the way ripe for Islamist groups or governments to exploit. Thank you. Uh, my lords, from the Foreign Secretary to our ambassadors in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in Sudan, we are talking urgently to partners across the region and the world to uh, ensure that humanitarian support can reach those who need it most and also that uh, we are doing everything we can to de-escalate the conflict. Uh, leaders on both sides must refrain from ethnic-based violence and discrimination and they must stress the importance of respecting human rights and avoiding civilian loss of life. Uh, and I agree with the Noble Lord, there must be accountability for human rights abuses. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, after the conflict of the 80s, we are on the brink of another tragedy. Civilians caught between violent rebels willing to die and a government threatening to shell a city. So why has it taken until today for the UN Security Council to meet? What is the United Kingdom doing to secure critical humanitarian corridors and human rights access to NGOs? And isn't this, does the noble lady agree, isn't this exactly the wrong time to slash Britain's crucial 0.7 commitment to humanitarian aid? Uh, my Lords, as I said, we are deeply concerned by the unfolding humanitarian catastrophe and the, the figures that the UN estimate um, are, are heartbreaking. Uh, we must do all we can, uh, both in international fora, uh, to bring this issue to the table, uh, but also continue on our diplomatic work on that. Um, on point seven, I, what I will say is that, you know, to me, it is a source of great pride uh, that the United Kingdom has been a development superpower and contributes so much to the world. Our support and leadership on development has saved and changed millions of lives and you can see that in the work and the progress that we've seen in Ethiopia. I call Lord Oates. My Lords, I welcome the Minister's comments on 0.7% and I certainly hope that we will not see that budget being cut to fund bombs and bullets in the defence budget. The Minister has recognised the dangers of the war spreading beyond Ethiopia's borders. Can she therefore tell the House whether the government's been in communication with the Eritrean government to commend their restraint following the TPLF rocket attack on Asmara and to urge them to continue to avoid responding to provocations. Uh, my Lords, we continue to engage with our partners uh, in Ethiopia and across the regions. Um, on Eritrea in sp specifically, we, we continue to track the situation, uh, raise our concerns at the deaths of civilians and, and raise the importance of respect for human rights in meetings with regional leaders. Baroness Chalker of Wallasey. My Lords, I'd like to ask my noble friend whether we have actually pressed for discussion with the Eritrean government. Uh, I know it has a good relationship now, thanks to Prime Minister Abi, but they will have a very clear view of how to put down the insurrection that's going on in Eritrea, uh, which is exacerbating the terrible situation in Tigray. Uh, I hope that the three eminent Africans will be able to bring some peace as they brought peace in their own countries. But could I ask my noble friend whether we can 
uh, work on the refugee situation and the displaced person situation. They are mainly in Sudan, but they are coming from Eritrea as well as from Tigray and from the surrounding area because the whole area is now in a considerable uh, jeopardy because of the action uh, between uh, Tigray and the Ethiopian government. Uh, my Lords, we, we of course absolutely welcome the involvement in Eritrea, of Eritrea in order to help bring about an, an end to this conflict. Uh, we share the view of the African Union that de-escalation and political dialogue is needed um, and we welcome the offers of mediation by the AU and President Ramaphosa of South Africa. Whilst uh, Abiy has uh, agreed to meet with the envoys, uh, he so far declined offers of mediation and we encourage the Ethiopians to engage to help bring about a dialogue that, that ends conflict and fo focuses on a political solution. Solution. The latest figures we had uh, this morning from UNHCR was that as of the 22nd of November, over 41,000 people have arrived in Sudan. And I'm sure that, like me, many noble lords will have seen the distressing footage of people fleeing for their safety. They must be supported, and that is what we're working to do. I call Lord Treesman. Uh, my lords, I apologise for the loss of contact earlier. Uh, many years of close contact with Ethiopia as Minister for Africa taught me how vital it is to sustain security in the country, vital for the Horn of Africa, vital for the African Union, whose headquarters are in Ethiopia, and for avoiding humanitarian catastrophes. Uh, I welcome what the Minister has said about international links, and I hope they will be pursued with the energy that she has conveyed. But I wonder, will the Minister and the Foreign Secretary meet with me urgently to discuss steps to provide safety in the United Kingdom for the Tigrayan Ethiopian leaders and their families, who are our key allies, key allies of the United States at many vital times over the last 15 to 20 years, and who now face ethnic purges, which may be on the edge of, of uh, genocide. Um, as the noble lord knows from his previous role, and as he highlights, um, the uh, Ethiopia plays an incredibly important role in the stability across the region, not least through its contributions to the UN peacekeeping operations. And a, a prolonged conflict could have further implications for regional stability uh, in the Horn of Africa. And I'm very happy to meet with the noble lord to discuss refugees. Baroness Kennedy of Cradley. I declare an interest as a patron of action on poverty. Uh, the clock is kick, tick, ticking down on the threatened 72-hour uh, ultimatum of the military assault on Tigray, where already bombings and massacres have already driven 40,000 Ethiopians to flee to Sudan. What is the government seeking to achieve from the imminent secure, UN Security Council to, to, to pull back the threatened offensive? And what further steps are the government planning to ensure free, safe, unhindered humanitarian access to the Tigray region and give the refugees the support they need? Uh, my Lords, I share the noble lady's concern of the reports on the, on the imminent push. Uh, we are delighted, and as I say, we have been supporting uh, the UN Security Council to be discussing the issue. Uh, our objective on this is for the parties to, to de-escalate and ensure the protection of civilians and avoid further spillover into the neighbouring regions of Ethiopia. And, of course, ensuring access uh, for humanitarian actors uh, is essential. Uh, that is what we have been pushing for and will continue to push for. As I said, the refugees def desperately need our help. Lord Lancaster of Kimbolton. My Lords, I was privileged to be the first Minister to visit Ethiopia a few days after the election of Prime Minister Abiy in 2018, and I left with a deep appreciation as to just how vital uh, a stable Ethiopia is to the wider stability of the Horn of Africa. So can I ask my noble friend what specific military and security assistance we are offering to try to ensure that the terrible events in Tigray do not uh, uh, stretch to a wider region? Um, my Lords, the, the conflict is currently focused on the Tigray region in northern Ethiopia, but as my noble friend says, it's likely to have a, a negative impact on the political stability and security in other parts of Ethiopia. We strongly value our relationship with Ethiopia, uh, and they have a key role to uh, ensure that we promote stability and security across the region. Uh, I spoke earlier about the CSSF regional programming. We also uh, work on capacity building in countries such as Somalia through the training of troops, and we'll continue to work closely with our regional partners in order to assist their stabilisation efforts. Baroness Uden. 
uploads on several occasions, I witnessed firsthand the devastation of torture, rape, and murder of Rohingya people at the hands of Burmese government. International communities were too slow to protect, punish, and prevent the perpetrators of genocide and ethnic cleansing with Bangladesh, leaving Bangladesh to manage largely the refugee population of one million. What are, the, what are our government doing to ensure to prevent similar fate of Ethiopian people? And on this um, occasion, and assist Sudan with the resources that they will so desperately need to manage the refugees. Uh, my Lords, we're very proud uh, to be one of the largest donors uh, to the Rohingya people. Uh, we will continue in that commitment uh, in order to help them deal with the tragic situation uh, that they find themselves in. We are monitoring the violence in Ethiopia very closely. As I say, we're clear that we need to see de-escalation and political dialogue. We think that's the only way forward to prevent further violence. As party to the Convention on the Crime of Genocide, we're firmly committed to the prevention and punishment of genocide as appropriate under the Convention. We will continue to support the refugees. We are supporting them both through our FCDO bilateral programmes, but also we will carefully consider what further support is available uh, for the UN agencies, for the UN agencies who are doing such vital work to help them.